Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Android tablet powered by the Raspberry Pi 4 that I recently put together. Now this consists of a Raspberry Pi 4 4 GB model running Consta Kang's Lineage 17.1, which is Android 10, and the all-new Raspad 3. And if you're not familiar with the Raspad 3, I've done a video on it. Basically, it turns your Raspberry Pi into a 10.1-inch touchscreen portable tablet. So as you can see here, I've gone into settings. We have the Raspberry Pi 4, and a better way to look at this would be through Ida64, so I have downloaded the app here. Raspberry Pi 4, powered by that Broadcom, and I'm overclocked to 1.9 gigahertz on all four cores because I did run into a couple issues running it at 2.1. It just wasn't delivering enough power, and I had a lot of freezes. Now before we get started, I do want to mention that Android does work on the Raspberry Pi 4, but really this isn't something that you want to go out and use every single day, at least not yet. This build here does have hardware accelerated graphics, so 3D games work better on this build than any other build for any other Raspberry Pi 4 ever, but we don't have hardware video decoding or encoding yet. So when doing anything involving videos on this build, it's going to be using the software decoder and encoder. So I was able to get Google Play up and running. I've done a full video on installing the Android 9 version of this operating system. Basically, you can follow that to install the newest Android 10 version that I'm running here. I've also installed a bunch of stuff to test. So let's go ahead and get right into it. First up, we're going to test some video playback. Keep in mind, this is using the software decoder. But I was able to get Netflix, YouTube, and even Tubi up and running. Hulu also works. I just have these installed. So as you can see, it does load up. This is the phone version of Netflix, so you're not going to get any HD here. And even if we did, it wouldn't play it very well because we're using the software decoder. But Netflix is working. I've been hooked on this show for the last couple days. It's definitely not the highest resolution, but playback is surprisingly smooth with this build of Android on the Raspberry Pi 4. I also wanted to test out a free video app, so we'll go with Tubi here. Just downloaded it from the Google Play Store. I personally don't use this one, but uh, it does look like there's some good stuff on here. Let me go ahead and find something to play. We'll go with Mr. Bean. It does look like it's taking a second to buffer. Hopefully it does work. So yeah, we're definitely playing through Tubi, so the free apps are also going to work here. Again, not the best resolution, but it's watchable. And we still get that picture-in-picture -picture mode with all of these apps, including Netflix and YouTube. I've also downloaded a few native Android games, so let's go ahead and test those out. So first up, we have Minecraft Pocket Edition, and we still have those weird coloring issues that we had on the Raspberry Pi 3. Everything has a blue tint to it, even my character, and pretty much all of the other characters in the game. I'm running the beta right now from the Google Play Store so we can see the FPS, and we're around 15. I have everything as low as possible. The highest I've seen it go is around 24. I've got chunks all the way down. I have fancy graphics off. Performance with Minecraft on the Raspberry Pi 4 with Android isn't great, as you can see here. So let's go ahead and move over to something a little different. And that's going to be Brawl Stars, and surprisingly enough, we're running at full speed. Haven't noticed any slowdowns or anything like that. It's handling it just fine. I'm using the on-screen controls, as you can see here. And by the way, with Android on the Pi 4, you can connect a Bluetooth controller, and you'll see that for the next two games. It's definitely not the hardest game to run, but seeing this native Android game running on the Raspberry Pi 4 with hardware GPU acceleration is pretty amazing. And we're in a 3 versus 3 match here. So I've connected my Xbox One S controller over Bluetooth to the Raspberry Pi 4, and we're going to test out Real Racing 3. Now they have done an amazing job optimizing this game. I've been able to run this on super low-end tablets at full speed, and I suspect we'll get some good performance out of this one with the Pi 4. It's 
So yeah, this is actually running really good with the Raspberry Pi 4. I haven't even had a chance to go into the settings and turn the graphics down. I know it kind of optimizes it when you start it. I'm not sure if we could go any lower, but definitely doesn't look like we need it. And the final thing I wanted to test here was a little bit of N64 emulation. We'll just go with Diddy Kong Racing. I'm using Moopin64 Plus FZ from the Google Play Store, and it's running amazingly. In the past, when I've tested Android on the Raspberry Pi 3, I noticed that N64 just worked so much better in Android, and it looks like we're getting the same thing here. I've never been able to get this kind of performance out of RetroPie, Botocera, or Laka on the Pi 4 with this game. So yeah, Android actually performed much better than I thought it would on the Raspberry Pi 4 with the Raspad 3, but as you can see, the Raspad 3 is a bit of a thick unit. This is battery powered, and they're claiming 3-4 to four hours of battery life, and I'd say with my testing now, I'm getting around 3 hours even running Android at 1.9 GHz. I didn't have to do anything special to get the touchscreen working with Android, it just worked right out of the box, and over on the other side, we have our power input, 3.5mm audio jack, full-size HDMI out, three USB 3.0 ports, and a full-size Ethernet jack. And just in case you didn't see the original video that I did on the Raspad 3, we'll go ahead and do a little bit of a teardown. I've already taken all the screws and SD card out, and this should pop right off. So from the original packaging, there's one modification that I made. I actually removed the included fan because it kind of resonates inside the case and just added a small heatsink fan from Amazon. They're about nine bucks. It keeps it cool enough even with that overclock and I can't hear it at all inside of that case. But this is super easy to assemble. As you can see we have the Raspberry Pi 4 over here and the main board. Everything just plugs in with ribbon cables and HDMI cables. We have both of our HDMIs, power over here, USB, and Ethernet. Plus we have these dual speakers up front here and everything just works. They also offer the Raspad OS which they've recently updated with all of the working features including an accelerometer which allows you to rotate the screen while you're running Raspad OS. So would this be worth picking up just to specifically run Android on the Raspberry Pi 4 with the Raspad 3? The price on this is going to come out way too high for the performance you're getting but if you're into tinkering and you know you're going to run different operating systems on this it might be worth it in the end. But if you're specifically looking for a cheaper Android tablet, I would go with something like the new Amazon Fire 8 HD+. But that's pretty much it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I had a few people asking me to test out Android on the Raspad 3, so I figured I'd go ahead and throw together a quick video. If you have any questions, or you want to see anything else running on the Raspad 3 and the Raspberry Pi 4, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.